Measuring reaction rates. Different methods are used for different reactions. We must look at the subscripts and use common sense. Example, here's a reaction with calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Looking at the reactants, we see that there are no gases in the reactants. But there is one gas in the products. CO2 is a gas. So it escapes if the system is open. As the CO2 escapes, the mass of the rest of the system will, what do you think? Yes, it'll decrease. So the rate could be expressed as R equals the change in mass of the container and contents over the change in time in an open system. And this is true when there are no gases in the reactants and there is a gas in the products, the CO2. We can find the rate of this reaction by plotting the data on a graph. If we put the mass of the container and the contents on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, we can get an idea of how fast the reaction is by the slope of the line. If we take the rise over the run, that'll give us an indication of the rate. You will notice in this case that the slope of this line is negative. That doesn't matter. For rates, we just disregard the sign of the slope. If something's used up or goes down, the slope will be negative. We're only concerned about how fast it's going up or down. So the rate is just the change in amount over change in time, whether it's going up or down. So what we do is if the slope is negative or positive, we just express the rate as being positive. Reaction rate doesn't stay constant during a reaction. It changes as the reaction proceeds. You can see by this curve here that the rate is fast to begin with, so the slope is steep. As time goes on, reactants get used up, so the rate gets less, and the slope gets less steep. So therefore, we have this type of curve. What we can do is we can take the average slope of any time period, and that gives us an idea of the rate during that time period. Let's say we want to take the average slope between time 0 and time 30. What we do is we draw a line from time 0 to time 30 on the graph. And then we take the slope of that line. So the rise is from 100 down to 20, which is negative 80 grams. The run goes from 0 over to 30. So the run is 30 seconds. Slope is rise over run, which is negative 80 over 30, which comes out to negative 2.7 grams per second. Even if the slope is negative, we still call the rate positive. So we can say the rate is 2.7 grams per second. Say we want to find the precise rate at a certain time. Let's say, for example, 22 seconds. We want to find the actual rate at that time. What we do is we draw a tangent to the curve at 22 seconds. That's a tangent there. Then what we do is simply take the slope of that tangent, the rise over the run. The slope of the tangent will give us the rate at that particular point, in this case at 22 seconds.